Father Kelvin Ugu, a Catholic missionary priest in Gambia, advised Nigerians to prioritize safety as the Ember month begins on Sundays. And then uh, Ugu emphasized the importance of vehicle maintenance before praying against accidents or superstitions involving blood-sucking demons. Now, despite efforts by the Federal Safety Court to debunk beliefs that the Ember month, September through December, are riskier, many Nigerians continue to hold on to these superstitions. In a Facebook post, Father Ugu outlined five steps to help people avoid unnecessary dangers. Now, he talked about, he said, while we pray against accidents and blood sucking demons in the ember months, please do us the favor of keeping the following five points in mind. Making sure that your oil, you know, making effort to do necessary maintenance of your vehicle oil. He talked about checking your brakes. He talked about your money checks of your vehicle before you moved out. He talked about the tire, that you shouldn't compromise on your car tires. Have all of these in mind, else you'll be putting yourself in danger. You know, all of those basic things that should actually be looked out for while you are, uh, while you might want to take a journey or while you might want to drive. Do we really pay how much attention? would you say um, Nigerians pay? He even talked about alcohol that people should not drink and drive. How much attention would you say the Nigerians really pay to safety, especially when driving is concerned? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to advise, uh, give advice to people, but frankly speaking, uh, it's quite sad that uh, we need a foreigner to advise us before we know what we should really do. No, the, the Reverend Father is not a foreigner. Okay. Uh, he has a Nigerian name. It's a Nigerian? Yes. Uh, but lives uh, yes. somewhere. Mm. Okay, fine. Okay, that's why he's interested in uh, Nigeria. Okay, fine. If that is the case, you see, the, the truth of the matter is I just told uh, my, my brethren a few Sundays ago, when we look at this, the, the lesson, afflictions in the life of Christians, you know, Nigeria tend to believe that once you call Jesus, nothing will happen to you any, anymore. It's quite deceitful. It's quite deceitful. If you call out the name of Jesus, write the name of Jesus on your forehead, and you enter the road without looking at the road, the car will knock you down. That name of Jesus you are calling will not save you. The car will knock you down. So what this young man has said is quite true. Prayer is to do the things that God, that you cannot do for yourself. You need prayer for things that God is required to, things that are bigger than you, that only God can do for you. That's where you need prayer. Not the things you can do. You can make, you can put a kettle on the fire, you make your eba and eat. You will not sit down there. God will boil the fire for you, make the fire for you, make the, warm the water for you. Hungry will kill you. So what we are saying here, Nigerians, you wake up from this kind of religion, this blindfolded religion that we are selling everywhere. This is not the religion that Jesus died for. This is not Christianity that Jesus died for. Christianity that Jesus died for does not remove you and me from the vagaries of life. The issues of life, and it was very clear in the scripture. There is nothing happened to you that is not common among men. And that you become a Christian does not remove you from your humanity. You are still your human. You are still your human. So if somebody is telling you some specific thing, and uh, you, you are carried away, then you, you just go to the road and one car will knock you and you are gone. We we'll say to God be the glory. And you are over. Superstitious so believe, you know, it, it has been in our society That's for a long time. That's what I'm telling time. you. And it's something that a lot of people hold really strong to themselves. When we talk about things like um, accidents, right? You hear things like, even if you do everything you're supposed to do, you still need you know, God to protect you and stuff like that. So, and then he has talked about superstitions that from September to December, there's something about the ember months. There's something about the ember months and accidents. There's something about the ember. I don't know if you have ever heard people say that or you are aware of that particular ideology that some people have. Yes, my sister. For the sake of time, eh? let me be very frank with you. I have said it here before now. Only this part of the country, like if you go to a door data, you see people who are real in terms of witches and wizard activities. You see people confess witch. This my brother had an accident and died. Is I was responsible for that accident and all that. 
So that's what so we are that's saying. the only part of the country mm -hmm. where we have that. No, I'm not saying so. But okay. in, this, in this other part, they know the green now. They will say, no wish here. Yeah. Everybody here, yeah. everybody here yeah, is saint now. You understand? Here, yeah, nobody will be saying in this community, nobody will accept there's a wish and wizard here. Yeah. I've been in River Sea for more than 20 years, more than 25 years. You know, but here yeah, you can't say hey, somebody saying a wish. But in my place in Delta, in a those state, you see people confess wish. So so, so thing, I mean, okay, now I want to die, you need prayer so that they can recover from it. So this is a no superstitious so, no, at the so, end of No, what I'm telling you now is that that somebody had an accident. If you have done what you're supposed to do right, an accident still occurs. It has nothing to do with superstitious of any kind. But the iniquity of men, that is why we should preach more of repentance. Tell the people to take away their hands from evil. Take away their hands from sin. Somebody carry your name somewhere to go and do evil. And when something happens, we say it's superstitious. People are doing evil. There's no superstitious anywhere that once December come, October, this October night has been listed that 50 people must <laughs> die. Then uh, after October, then November, 80 people must die. Then it must happen. There's no such superstition. It is the evil, the iniquity of the people. Why is it that the way it is happening in Nigeria every October, December, uh, uh, November, and September? Why is it so it's not happening like that in America? All this is only in Nigeria. Why is this does not happen like that in UK? I'm trying to get you. Are you saying it's happening or you're saying it's not? What happening? I am telling you yes. is that that these things happen, it has nothing to do with any super so, okay. Naturally, that is the way it is. It has nothing to do like that. One, I've told you that one, if you don't do what you're supposed to, just like this man has said, if you have a bad tire and you are not driving on the high speed from here to worry, you will get to a place that tire will run and it will, it will bust and push you to the bush. It has nothing to do with superstition. Or you have a wicked brother or wicked sister who will now become envious of your explosion, material explosion, and now begin to look at you, they want to hear your name in this family, and now begin to see I can bring you down. These are the things we have in black Africa, especially in Nigeria. So you are going to do with superstition, just the evil of the people. That so is you why agree that it exists. This is not yes, just somebody's now. idea coming from nowhere. No, but the iniquity, tell the people, preach if you are a preacher, tell the people, let your family people progress. When your family people progress, it's your own good. Tell the people, let your community people progress. Don't hinder the prosperity of your community people. If they progress, it's also for your own good. So don't think evil. Think of how you can uh, set a trap for them on the way. These are the things we must regulate and correct. Preach to ourselves. Tell ourselves to take away our hands from iniquity. Not all these uh, flamboyant, all these deceitful gospel people are preaching anywhere. Poverty is not your portion and you should not be sick. And people are sick every day. You know, recently we've been having a lot of arguments online. Since we're talking about religion, we've been having a lot of arguments online with some people saying that religion is the problem of Nigeria and some people saying religion is not. But from your explanation, I would really like to get your perspective to this. Do you think or do you agree? How do you think that uh, religion has impacted Nigeria? I have told you where we started. And I've said it here repeatedly. The Christianity that Jesus died for, that he conferred on the apostle to carry to the world, cannot be a problem to any community. That Christianity cannot be a problem to any community. But don't forget, Jesus told you, and the apostle later on re-emphasized repeatedly, that many false preachers will come. Today, men have risen, and they have formed churches, they are all men of God, we are celebrating them in our country. So this what they are doing is not of Christ, of men. Until we are able to separate the gospel of Christ from these fake preachers, we continue to say religion is our problem, religion is our problem. Christianity that Jesus died for is not the problem of any man. It's not the problem of any country or any continent. It builds society, the religion, the Christianity that Jesus died for build people. Build community, build society. Which one do we have steal. now? Which one do we have now in Nigeria? It's fake one. Uh, it's, it's, oh, we have the fake the one. The popular Christianity in Nigeria mm. is fake. The that that means it, it. How is it affecting? How is it impacting the nation now? Well, you know, you know, I know how they affect that. Yeah, because, I thought you, because, I thought you because, have because, a religion. Because when they tell the people, they don't accept. You say, "Leave man or don't judge a man of God." Somebody will tell you like that because the people themselves they don't want to cool down to say, "What is the truth?" What is the truth? Jesus said, know the truth and we set you free from frivolous men. But Nigeria, are they ready? 
They are not ready. Don't judge a man of God. Don't judge a man of God. Who is a man of God? Because he's driving a jeep. Because he has a church that is long from here to the other end. Is that the problem? So what are we, we are against, saying? Uh, are we against the wealth of the men of God? What is the wealth? When you say wealth, mm. you, you, this is what I'm saying. We are, we are, when you say wealth, how did you become wealthy? When you say man of God is wealthy, how? The church, the, the resources of a church, does it belong to a man of God? The resources that you and I contributed, just like as Nigerian politicians are doing today, using our collective wealth and their personal privacy. Is that how it's supposed to be? And you are bringing that to the church and say the wealth of a man of God. Who is, who is the wealth of a man of God? Who is that man of God that is wealthy? What has he been doing before he formed church? So how think, much does he have before he formed a church? You think no man of God is wealthy? If, no, I'm not saying you cannot be. If you are doing something, Using your hand to walk. Paul was a preacher, yet he wasn't working. What if he's not working, but his church members are sowing seed? Who is the seed? Is he the only man that should be sowing seed to in the church? Is our anger with the money no, 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 that is coming see, to the men of the God These are the issue. These else. are the issue. Yes. A needy by the gospel of Christ. Not be pocket when don't fool. Let me use that word. Not be filled pocket. You want to put more. You want to put more. And you are seeing one who is dying. That's not the gospel. You want to sow seed, you want to impress the man of God, let me give you 20 million the other day. You don't do that in Christ. You give seed to people who need that seed. Not the one, the pocket that's already filled. You don't do that in Christ. So if you have the seen the people, me... The people sowing the seed are the problem, that's what you're saying. They are timid now, they are spiritual timid. So it's not the men of God that are the problem. Who? Together, is what they taught them now. When somebody, oh, is, okay. when somebody is saying that if you don't pay your tithe, you, accident, you will get accident and die away. You make the boat to be afraid, and he come and bring something for you. Is that not the gospel? That's not the gospel. So what you are saying on the Nigerians, especially the educated ones, who, those who say they are PhD holder, degree holder, BSc holder, and all that, they are even the biggest fools in this whole no, arena. No, 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 we can't, we can't say that. We can't call the PhD holders fools. What, what you, have you, to, you have to take, you, you you have to take it. it. No, you have to take you it back. It fool? That's, that's, you, that's a generic a statement. I didn't define it. No, I didn't mention anybody's name. I didn't define a no, fool. A fool is somebody shoulders. who knows what is right and will not do it. That's a fool. If you know this is what is right for you to do, and you wouldn't do that. You do the wrong thing. Then you made yourself a fool. It's not the man who so made if the pronouncement. If, like, if we read the country of religion, you think the country will be better? <laughs> no, wow. The country we find ourselves before all of us today become church owners and Christians. We have traditional religion in this country where you have morals at the extreme. Morals. I can't see what belongs to you and I want to destroy it intentionally. I can't see what belongs to you and I want to take it to rob you of it. This killing and killing and killing that's everywhere today. We were once in this country. Very beautiful environment. But today, we say we are, we are Christian, we are Muslim, and all that. Then look at our environment, look at our country. So we are not obeying the doctrine that was that religion even preached. The religion we are talking about, we don't obey the one Jesus Christ preached, the one uh, Islam preached, we don't obey it. Otherwise, a Christian cannot be a thief now. You can't be a Christian and you are a public office, you are stealing money. And you say you are a Christian, you are carrying your shoulder. You are deceiving yourself. You cannot say you are a true Muslim and uh, you are still in public form. You are a thief now. Then tomorrow you run to Saudi Arabia to go and buy, buy your, your head down. If the money in Saudi Arabia was stolen the way you are stealing the one in your country, can you go to that place and enjoy yourself? So that is the issue. All right. We well, must come down mm. to the reality. Otherwise, our country will continue to run the way we are running. Okay, talking about